Uh, what we're looking at is scientific notebook uh, and uh, you can, there are filters built into the application. I can see a preview of experiments. Um, you can see here uh, we were looking at a grid, which is a very information dense view. If I'm working on a tablet, I might want to have cards or thumbnails, uh, which allow me to uh, interact uh, using a stylus or my finger rather than a mouse. Um, and then I am uh, going to do some filters here. So I think I'm looking at my recent experiments. And then over here we have our 6W tags. So I've uh, typed in a word up at the top. I think I typed in formulations. So I'm seeing all my formulation experiments. And now I can easily filter by just uh, the experiments that are in a particular project or have been run by a particular individual. You can see that the filters hold when I go through those different form factors. And then I can easily back out those filters and go back uh, to my full list of experiments. Uh, so those filters are all built in. Uh, you can add your own 6W tags. So we have standard ones like who created the experiment, uh, what project is it in. Um, we have a full text search available as well. Um, and then you'll be able to add your own things like uh, business unit, um, uh, department, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's just how we allow you to search for your experiments. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is look at our audit history in Scientific Notebook. Um, so again, uh, we have a list of experiments. Um, here I've opened up an experiment. Um, I can uh, go and to my audit page and expand it and it's uh, sort and filterable. So I can see all of the things that have happened to my experiment, change, changes in content, uh, life cycle changes. If someone has been granted access to my experiment or not, that's all here in the audit, as you would expect. I can sort and filter by any of the fields in the audit. Uh, we tried to break things out as discrete as possible. So uh, you have all the flexibility that you want in order to uh, see the audit information that you need. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, clone this experiment and uh, you'll see that the audit uh, gets updated based on the clone here. And then I'm going to, once I have my cloned experiment, I'm opening up my properties panel and I'm going to go ahead and change the name of my experiment. Uh, and then we'll open up the audit and see that we've, we have that uh, live update of the experiment. So this works a little bit different than some, some other applications and that you can see the audit right alongside the experiment. Uh, this will be of particular use in this application because we do support concurrent editing. So uh, if you're working on one part of an experiment and someone else is working on another part of an experiment, you can always open up the audit and see what changes that individual has made in the experiment uh, in real time, even if a particular section uh, is locked for you for editing while that other person uh, is working on the experiment. So let's uh, move on and look at formulations. Uh, so here we're starting a new experiment. So this is the first time we're looking into an experiment. So I'm going ahead and entering in the name of my experiment. I'm going to enter in a project. Uh, the project also uh, has permissions associated with it. So when I select a project to add my experiment to, the experiment uh, inherits permissions about who can see the experiment, who can browse the experiment, and who's allowed to review the experiment. I'm also selecting an experiment type with type ahead. So this particular experiment type is a, a formulations experiment type, which has our integration with the formulation design application. Uh, and so here we're going to see that experiment open up. Over on the left-hand side, we have our write-up section, which allows you to add discrete text sections, uh, which, act, which have context. Uh, so that's how we can pull the parameters out and distinguish one temperature from another. Uh, here, I'm just going to add in a simple diagram of what I want my equipment set up to look like for my experiment as a starting point. So I've put in some text and then I'm going to drag a image into my experiment. Um, it comes in as a thumbnail to save space, uh, but then you can actually uh, expand it and look at it in more detail right next to the write-up section. Uh, so just a desktop reactor that we, we have in this experiment. All right. So now I'm going to go out and I want to add some formulation information. So I'm going to go out and search in the platform for a formulation. Uh, so I'm typing in formulations or I could type in conditioner or some other term, a project 
uh, code and it's giving me a list of all my formulations. The icons that you see there are different for the dip different types of objects. So the beaker icon is our icon for uh, formulations. So I have a lot of experiments, which are the test tubes, and I'm looking for a formulation that I want to add. I can also use my 6W tag. So if I get a lot of results as I did here, I could uh, go in and further refine that. And now I'm grabbing that formulation and dropping it onto Scientific Notebook. So I grabbed it directly from the search and dropped it into my application. Uh, and you'll see in a minute, um, over on the right-hand side, we're getting our formulation grid. So within you know, how long did that take? 15 seconds. I have my full formulation details with all my materials and my material amounts. And on the left-hand side, it actually wrote a rudimentary procedure for me. So it used that information from the formulation grid uh, using that natural language processing. Uh, it wrote a procedure for me. So if you're in the early development stage of formulations uh, and you just want to have a, a quick procedure so that you can uh, meet your compliance goals and send it off for review and witnessing and protect your IP, uh, then maybe that's all you need. If you're a little bit later in development and you want to add some additional details, you can go right into that auto-generated text um, and you can enter some additional details about what you saw in the laboratory and add some conclusions. Uh, and those blue material highlights are actually what we call smart text. So if I clicked on any of those material links, it would actually take us out to the material service and I could see details about the individual materials. Okay, uh, so we've based our synthetic chemistry functionality and scientific notebook off of our uh, class leading synthetic chemistry functionality that we have in our Biovia workbook product, uh, but we have some new modern twists. Uh, what I wanted to highlight is our new synthetic search functionality. So I can click on uh, scientific search and it gives me a list of all my experiments. And then I can actually look for the experiment that I want. I can see details of the individual experiments. Uh, and if there's too many on the list or I can't easily find the one that I want, I can go ahead and narrow that down either by doing a structure search um, or by doing a, a full text search. So I'm invoking my chemistry search. This is our pipette sketcher uh, editor, which is designed specifically for mobile devices. Um, and here I'm entering in a cast number of a material. It's going out to search ACD and it brings in the structure based on the cast. And I can either do a substructure search, exact match, um, or, and I can decide if I want to see that material as a, a, a starting material or a product in my experiments. Um, and now you're going to see that it's going to give me a filter list of my experiments. Uh, and once again, I can just grab one of those experiments, the one that's of interest to me, and I can drag it from the search results. And I just drag it right onto that scientific notebook widget in the background, and it opens up that experiment for me. So I'm very easily able to go from search right into the application. Here you can see my reaction scheme. Uh, here I'm entering in a material name because I want to add acetonitrile as a reagent. Um, so I go out and search it and I click OK and it's added above uh, the scheme. And I think now I'm going to add another material. I think I'm adding it via CAS number again. Uh, so I want to add something, uh, another reagent below the arrow. So I'm coming in here, entering in a CAS number. So again, I can uh, do the name of the material and that could be common or UPAC name. I can do a cast number search. I can do a structure search. It finds that uh, information, in this case, from ACD. And now I can say, yes, I want to add these, uh, these materials to my experiment. Uh, and when we go back to the experiment, uh, those materials are above and below the arrow in my scheme. And they've actually been added to my synthetic chemistry table down below. So I can go ahead and add some actual amounts and get working on my procedure. Uh, so uh, that's uh, just a, a brief overview of our synthetic chemistry functionality um, and the, the synthetic chemistry stoichiometry table is integrated with that reaction scheme section. It does all of the uh, expected synthetic chemistry calculations that you would want in terms of entering in equivalence or mass or, or uh, volume amounts and having it doing all the conversions and calculating percent yields, et cetera, et cetera. We wanted to have a clear path to get your data from your existing ELN uh, into Scientific Notebook. What it is is a way to consolidate all of your ELN data in one place in the 3D experience platform in the Scientific Notebook application. So again, we're starting in Scientific Notebook um, in Grid View, which is a very information-dense view that's great if you're working on a monitor. 
It's a classical view. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do some filtering here so we can look at my experiments or my recent experiments. Um, and then we're going to go and uh, just filter it down to only workbook experiments. So we have filters that show you only workbook experiments, only notebook experiments, only scientific notebook experiments. Those are also available as 6W tags, so you can quickly get to that information. If, if you search on a term and you only want to find uh, workbook experiments, for instance, you'd be able to filter that with the 6W tags. Uh, so I am now going to do a search of my workbook experiments to find only experiments uh, that have the compound adenine in them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that search, and there's three. So I'm going to go ahead and open one of those experiments. I'm going to preview it. So when I click on the preview button for workbook experiments, it opens a little sidebar that has a link to the PDF of that experiment. So for those of you who may be workbook users, uh, this report should be uh, familiar to you. It's our standard workbook PDF report. So I can see all of the experimental data details, including the audit history in that preview. And then if I want to open that experiment in workbook, I can, it uh, sends me a link to log into workbook. So I go ahead and log into workbook and the experiment is opened in workbook and it respects whatever permissions I have on that experiment in workbook. So in this case, it, it's opening in, in read only. Uh, so I was very easy, easily able to see all the experimental details of that experiment uh, and then open it in the native application. So just a little uh, preview of how uh, that uh, collector works uh, in scientific notebook.